So let's now uh, look at the syntax of the prologue language. Uh, the syntax is actually e extremely simple. Um, this slide here defines using uh, um, context free grammar or backwards noun form defines the language, the, the syntax of the language. That's all. Uh, so the Starting symbol here is fact, and what is a fact? Uh, fact is a, is a term that ends with a, a period. Uh, recall that fact does not have a right hand side, so fact is a term. What is a term? Term can be a number, it can be an atom, it can be a variable, or it can be a compound term that consists of an atom and then parenthesis open, then you have terms and then parenthesis closes. And these atoms uh, are uh, relations. They, they, this is, as it says here, atoms stand for themselves. They, they, are, they are lowercase letters. For example, the append relation that we looked at earlier is, is uh, uh, considered an atom in this, is, in this grammar here. This was a fact. What is a rule? Well, rule has a right-hand side. So on the left-hand side we have a term, but on the right-hand side we have terms, the plural. Uh, so what are terms? Terms is either a single term or a term followed by terms with a comma in between. So. Uh, I can have more than one term on the right hand side. That's basically what we're saying. And we will see an example of that later. And then the the last thing here is a query is a, is a, is terms. A query when I state a query I can have more than one term. Then a variable is something that starts with a capital letter. So we distinguish between a variable like the variable y here, which is a capital letter, and then a an atom which uh, has lowercase letters. So both append here is an atom, and a here is an atom. They start with a uh, they're they're lowercase uh, letters. They're they're spelled with lowercase. Uh, so, a compound term consists of an atom and then terms inside brackets. That, that's this part here, atom, and then we have parentheses open and terms and parentheses closes. So, one example of that would be link. This is the name of a relation here. And then parentheses open, bcpl, comma, c. So, link here is an atom according to this grammar. Atom, parentheses open terms parenthesis closes and bcpl comma c these are terms which consist of two atoms bcpl and c so if we look at uh, terms here inside the parenthesis what are terms terms can be a term followed by a comma followed by more terms and in this case we have oops in this case, we have two terms inside the parenthesis. BCPL, comma, C, both are spelled with lowercase letters. So this is an example of a compound term. So uh, let's look at an example program here. This program is called links.pl. And if I just open this program, Here you can see this program. Uh, so this is the program that is on the slide. And uh, first of all, we have one relation called link here. And 
notice that the very first ones, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight of them, the link, uh, the link, uh, the link relations are, uh, or the link clauses are all facts, because there is nothing on the right hand side here. And what does this relation mean? Well, that actually notice that the meaning of a relation is not uh, part of uh, 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 the language. The meaning is the meaning that the programmer um, decides to to use. So in this case, the meaning is is uh, that Fortran, the programming language is Fortran, is linked to Algol 60. That Algol 60 is linked to the programming language CPL that CPL is linked to BCPL, that BCPL is linked to C, that C is linked to C++, that alcohol 60 is linked to similar 67, and so on, that similar 67 is both linked to C++ and Smalltalk 80. And notice that these are all, the so the, the, the predicate is called link, and the terms uh, that are used, these are constants, this is uh, lowercase, everything is in lowercase letters here, these are not uh, variables. And uh, then we have another relation called path, and it starts with a fact, which basically means that there is always a path from L to L, so there is a path from a language L to the language itself. So that's the fact, but then the rule, we have the header of the clause, and then we have the body on the clause on the right hand side, and notice that we have a comma in between, which denotes AND. So we are saying that in order for path L, M to be true, we need to prove that there is a link from the first language to some intermediate language X, and then a path from that x to m. So if we can prove the right hand side, it um, implies that the left one, the left side is, is true. So if we load this program, I am supposed to use consult, and I use a single quote, And then I supply the whole path, and it's called links, and it's called links.pl. If it has the the uh, uh, ending pl, I don't have to specify it. But remember, I need to use a period at the end of the query. And now I have loaded this program that we were just discussing. So what can I do now? Now I can start initiating queries, and queries are of the form term 1, comma, term 2, comma, and so on, and the comma means, as we have talked about, the comma means that there's an AND conjunction. And each of these uh, terms is then a, a separate sub-goal. So let me now initiate one query here. Let me just copy it. So I have I ask the question basically is there a link from CPL to BCPL and a link from BCPL to C it gives me true why does it give me true why why is the result true well i asked is there a link from CPL to BCPL uh, well yes it's a fact actually and is there a link from BCPL to C? Yes, that's also a fact. So this was actually trivial for the system to find out, to, 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 uh, to prove this. It was trivial because it could use the facts. Now, a more interesting question. Is there a link from alcohol 60? to some language L, and then from, is there a link from that language to some language M? Well, looking at the, 
program or looking at the database as I, I could say because in a way that this looks like a database the facts are are um, we could say uh, knowledge that we put into a database uh, so is there a link from alcohol 60 to some language L yes there's a little there's a link from alcohol 60 to the language CPL and is there a link from that language to some other language M yes there is a, a link from CPL to BCPL and let's see if I hit enter here I get L is CPL and M is BCPL if I hit semicolon here it will give me more results so there is a link from alcohol 60 to similar 67 as well and So there is a link from, uh, what did we say, uh, alcohol 60 to similar 67 and then from similar 67 to C++ and if I hit semicolon I don't get more solutions. Well actually there is a link from similar 67 to small talk 80 as well so that's why I get the third solution. So I basically have three solutions to this particular query here. Now, uh, negation. Uh, prolog answers no, or actually I should say false, if we cannot find a proof uh, for the query. So the, the idea is that if I can't prove it, it must be false. So if I do link lisp to scheme it says false because there is the the constant for example lisp never appears in any of these facts so the idea is that if I can't prove it it must be false now if if I use I, I can I can uh, apply some kind of a negation if I use the the not relation so I can say not link lisp scheme and I get true in that case. So the query not p is true if prolog cannot use resolution to prove p. Um, let's try this uh, query. So what are we asking? We're asking is there a link from some language L to N and uh, and a link from some language M to N. So basically saying are there two languages L and M with a link to the same language N. And if we ask this then it says well L and could actually be the same as M which is Fortran. So notice that they said that L and M could possibly be the same, both of them linked to alcohol 60. If we look at the database, it says that there is a link from Fortran to alcohol 60. And then when it uh, instantiates, when Prolog instantiates this variable N, it says, well, that one could be Fortran and M could be Fortran as well. So if I continue, I will get some other results. There is alcohol 60 uh, which has a link to CPL and so on and if I hit I'm always hitting uh, or typing in semicolon then I get new results if I just type in enter I, it, I don't get more results so I could act a condition saying that I don't want L to be unified with M I don't want L to be the same as M and if I do that, it says that, okay, now L could be C and, and uh, N could be C++, or it could be similar 67. 
or L could be similar 67 and then N could be uh, C++. So in the first case, L is C and M is similar 67. So we have C and similar 67 and both of them have a link to C++. So that's what we were looking for. Now we have a little bit mentioned this term unification and this is at, this is at the heart of uh, logic programming languages and what what is unification so how does prolog solve equations of uh, this form when i do f of x comma b is equal to f of a comma y what I'm doing here, I'm asking Prolog to unify the two terms. The term on the left of the equal sign to the term of the right on the right to the right of the equal sign. I'm asking it to unify the two terms. And then it gives me the result back that x must be equal to a and y is equal to b. And that is kind of, kind of obvious, isn't it? That x is a variable, it must have the value a, and uh, y is a variable as well, it must have the value b. Uh, f of a comma b is called an instance of of x of, of f of x comma b because f of a comma b can be obtained by substituting this variable x with the constant a with the, with the term a but notice that f of a comma b is also an instance of the right hand side because i can obtain that one by substituting y with b so if i can find an instance which uh, is both an instance of the left hand side and an instance of the right hand side then i'm able to unify the two terms then i've actually find what is called a unifier so f of a comma b is a unifier of the two terms so the resolution in prolog are based on this term on this concept of unification and we say that two terms t1 and t2 are equal if they have a common instance u so in in this exa in the earlier example terms f of x comma b and f of a comma y are equal because they have a common instance the instance is f of a comma b and that instance was found by substituting x with a and substituting y with b that's how we get the common instance now the equal sign is the operator that stands for unification. So when I do x unified with 2 plus 3, it, what we're doing, we're binding the, uh, x, the variable x, to the term 2 plus 3. Notice it, that it, what it shows when I hit enter, it says x is equal to 2 plus 3. It doesn't say x is equal to 5 because I'm not doing assignment, I'm, not, I'm actually not uh, uh, asking for a calculation here. I'm unifying x with the term 2 plus 3. If I want uh, computation to be performed, I can say x is 2 plus 3, and in that case it will say x is equal to 5. Uh, if I do x is 2 plus 3, which will say that x is 5, and then I do x is equal to 5, then it will say that x is 5. So, uh, x has the value 5 and I'm asking it to unify x with 5 and that's that's what it did. However, if I do x uh, is 2 plus 3 and then and, you remember comma is and, and x is 2 plus 3, so I'm saying 
perform the computation 2 plus 3, which means 5, and I'm saying uh, uh, x, I'm then binding x with a value 5, and then I'm also binding s with the term 2 plus 3. I'm, I can't do that. This is not possible. This is false. Th these are not the same thing. Is, I use is for performing computation, but I use equal to times to form uh, unification. So let's uh, end this with uh, a, a program uh, called family. So we have a, a set of facts here. We have a relation called father, we have a relation called mother, relation called man, and a relation called woman. And uh, how do we interpret this? We interpret it this way that Terach is the father of Abraham, uh, Haran is the father of Lot, Sarah is the mother of Isaac, Tarak is a man, uh, Sarah is a woman, and so on. And the question is, for this family relation, how do we rewrite, how do we implement or write other relations based on these facts? We want to write the parent relation so that x is a parent of y, the son relation, such that x is the son of y, the daughter relation, so that x is the daughter of y, the grandfather and grandmother. Now, if I just load up this implementation, which is the one that I have actually here, So, at the start of the program, I have all the facts, and then my first relation is parent. So, what am I saying here? X is a parent of Y if X is the father. Actually, I should say father here and mother here. So x is the if x is the father of y, then x is the parent of y. But there's another possibility that if x is the mother of y, then it applies that x is also the parent of y. So if since I have two clauses for the parent clause, it basically means or. So either I need to prove that if I if I want to prove that x is the parent of y, then I either need to prove that x is the father of y or x is the mother of y. So if I if I load this program, I might actually have the, if I hit arrow, the arrow key, I'm able to browse the old commands. And this program is called family to no, oops, family two, right. Okay, so just to, if you look at the facts, then uh, Terach is the father of Abraham. So I can ask, Who is the parent of Abraham? Now I'm initiating a query. It says X is the father, no, sorry, Terak is the father of Abraham. Uh, who is the parent of Isaac? Whoops. Oh yeah, spelt it incorrectly. Abraham is the father of, is the parent of Isaac, and now I hit semicolon, and Sarah is also a parent of Isaac. Why is that? Because Sarah 
is the mother of Isaac and Abraham is the father of Isaac. So it's it gives me both the results. Because I asked for I hit semicolon. If I only hit enter, it doesn't give me more results. I by hitting semicolon and asking for all the possible results. As long as I hit semicolon. So this was the parent relation. How do I write the son relation? X is a son of Y if Y is the parent of X and X is a man. If X is a son of somebody, then X must be the man, a man, and then Y must be the parent. So can I ask who is whose son is uh, Isaac? Whose son is Isaac? Uh, well, Abraham and Sarah. Because Abraham and Sarah are the parents of uh, Isaac. And uh, Isaac is a man. Similarly, I can write the daughter relation. And the only thing that I have to change is that now I the condition that uh, X must be a woman. So... Uh, can I ask who the daughter of whom is Milsha? The daughter of Haran. Yes, because Haran is the father. That's true. Now, the grandfather relation. X is a grandfather of Y. How can I write that? Well, I've written it this way. If X is the father of Set, if X is the father of someone whom I call Set, and Set is the parent of Y, then X is the grandfather of Y. So if the X is the father of Set, and Set is the parent of y, then x is the grandfather of y. So who is the, what should we ask here? Who is the grandfather of Abraham? Grandfather Oops. Abra Abraham. T Terak is the father of Abraham. And Abraham is the father of Isaac. Ah, I see. So, I should have asked, is... Terak, the grandfather of someone. Yes, he is the grandfather of Isaac and Lot and Miliach and Isaac. He's the Terak is the grandfather of four persons. He's the grandfather of Isaac because Terak is the father of Abraham, which is a parent of Isaac. He is also the grandfather of Lot because Terak is the father of Haran and Haran is the father of Lot. He is also the grandfather of Milja because of the same reason because Terak is the father of Haran and Haran is the, is the father of Mi Milja. So, and then grandmother, the relation for grandmother is similar, except that then we are, we are demanding that X, since 
we're asking is x the grandmother of some y, then the requirement is that uh, x is actually a mother of someone, some person set, and that person is the parent of y.